I had a LinkedIn post about a hedge fund CFO who was upset that their analyst uh, didn't stay till midnight to finish work that they were doing and that was important and that caused the CFO to miss a deadline. Um, and so I, I recently offered on LinkedIn that anybody could ask me anything and I'd make a video about it. And Stephen Stark uh, had some very pointed questions about this situation and uh, my opinion about it and why he thought that my opinion might be wrong. So um, here's his question on the screen. As you can see, it has many parts. So here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm just going to answer the questions because I like it when people just respond and answer directly. So that's what I'm going to do. Again, to clarify, I'm going to answer these questions for this specific use case, not for all people under all circumstances. Um, next, after I answer the questions, because I'm just going to answer them, I'm going to explain why I'm so right about this specific case. And then finally, I'll share some general frameworks for how I think about this and, uh, you know, working and working hard in general. So on to the questions. Number one, if the analyst had already made plans well in advance and everybody was already aware of it, should the analyst have to just give them up? Generally, yes, is my opinion. Um, the analyst should ditch the plans and get their work done. Uh, assuming these are more generic get-together plans, not that like they're getting married or having surgery or, or something extremely, uh, you know, important from a life overall life perspective. Um, or if the analyst wants to just grab dinner with friends, that's totally fine. And they can just finish their work and stay up till 2 a.m. instead of midnight, if that's what it takes. So um, that's my answer. Question number two, if the analyst had a friend or family member they needed to take care of, should they just stay at work and let their friend or family member fend for themselves? All right, so for this one, I'm going to interpret it as what if the analyst has kids, uh, which they did not in this case or have any of these situations. But uh, in the case that they did, they would be expected to do what every other working parent does, uh, including myself, which is figure out how to take care of your kids and get your work done. Sometimes that means, uh, you know, staying late or staying up late or getting to work and doing work after the kids are asleep or having your partner take the kids solo or having a babysitter or any of the number of different ways that parents navigate uh, having kids and also working and getting their work done. Um, okay. Question number three. If the analyst were to stay until 12 a.m. to finish the job, would the CFO have given the analyst an additional day off or extra pay? That's the only way I can see that as being worthwhile. Uh, no. Okay, next. Can the CFO guarantee safe travel at 12 a.m.? So uh, hedge funds pay for car service or Uber typically. And so in this case, you would have a car service or Uber take you home. But really, is there ever any time your boss can guarantee safe travel home? I, you know, I, I, I don't know how to answer that question. But you will get Uber or car service in this case. I don't know if it matters in all cases. All right. Can the CFO guarantee that this is a very rare occurrence? No. Can the CFO guarantee that the analyst won't be let go during the next round of layoffs? No. Uh, although, if there's a choice between keeping the person who stays late to make sure that you don't miss important deadlines or getting rid of the person who goes home early and then screws you uh, in front of the executive team because you've missed a deadline, then it's pretty clear who's going to stay and who's going to not stay in that situation. Okay, so those are the direct answers to Stephen's question. Now, here's why I think this specific case is uncontroversial and frankly not very interesting. This is a hedge fund analyst. They are paid two to three times more than the typical data analyst, which is already twice the median salary in the U.S. And they're paid substantially more specifically so that they can be around at all hours and, and uh, do work that occasionally keeps them up till midnight. Now, some, you know, there's a wide variety of hedge funds like any other job. Some are light on the hours, some are heavier on the hours, etc. But in general, when you take that job, everybody knows what the deal is. Um, these jobs are incredibly difficult to get. 
most people listening to this are not going to get the chance to, to, to have these types of jobs. Um, and the thing about these jobs is that the best payoff isn't even the two or three times the salary that you get compared to the typical analyst. It's if you can get to that next level where you're getting substantially even more than that. And so this analyst, in this case, chose this job in this industry. Nobody forced them to take this job. There are countless, countless people who would take this trade, get paid two or three times your salary in order to occasionally or frequently, depending on the specifics of your job, work long hours. And if you take a job that has specific requirements, it's totally reasonable for your managers and leadership to expect you to fulfill those requirements. Everyone in this hedge fund specifically, I know for a fact, works long hours, including the CFO who frequently uh, would stay up till midnight or later doing work just in general because, it, you know, they did, they did deals. And when things get busy on deals, people stay really late. That's just the way it works in finance. Uh, even if the CFO didn't work long hours, in, in this case, the CFO did, but in, in other cases, maybe the CFO didn't work long hours, but the analysts did work long hours, I still think that's okay because you're hired with the expectation that you're going to work those hours. You know the deal walking in, and what's the problem? No problem. Um, by the way, there are many jobs like this and far, far worse. Imagine I told you about an analyst who got a call from their boss that they had just a couple days to pack up, move to another country, and work there for three or four months or longer, and their family couldn't come along with, right? Th that's much worse than uh, staying up till midnight occasionally, right? Um, but if you're an analyst for the military, that might happen, right? You might get called up. You might have to go travel to some faraway place and work there for a long time, and your family's not going to come with, and it's going to be pretty disruptive, right? Now, you knew the deal when you signed up for the job, so nobody's doing anything wrong expecting you to actually do the job that you signed up for. Every job comes with pluses and minuses, and that's why I think in this case, for the hedge fund analyst, this is not controversial anywhere except for on LinkedIn. Um, okay, now here's the bigger picture, and this is what I think is more interesting. Data is a choose-your-own-adventure career. You can decide what's important to you and then make your own decisions and trade-offs about what you want to do with your career and your life. In general, I found that there is a pretty strong relationship between the amount of responsibility that you're willing to take on and the amount that you're going to get paid or willing to take on slash companies are willing to give you, right? Um, I've never seen anyone move up the ranks without putting in a lot of hours. And so if career growth is really important to you as a data person, I'd be ready to work long hours. Um, most jobs won't be hedge fund, you know, banking, analyst, type type of long, right? They're not going to expect you to work 100-hour weeks, um, but it's probably not going to be a strict 9 to 5. If you don't care as much about moving up or maximizing your compensation, it's easier to find something with fewer hours. If a company is getting you at way below market, but in return you are getting uh, cushy hours, that's totally fair trade. You could take that. Um, I've had people reporting to me uh, who've been in both categories. I've had people who really wanted to move up and really put in the work, and I've had people who were good but didn't necessarily put in like that extra work and also didn't really expect to move up to the next level. Um, and that's, that's, that's a choice for every individual. Um, you know, even saying that, each job is going to have different pluses and minuses. So the more in demand your skill set, the more leverage you'll have to negotiate the type of work that you do. And just me personally, like I've always worked pretty long hours, but it's not even a long hours thing. I've, I've chosen between different opportunities where um, I've, I've given up compensation in order to get flexibility, right? I do have kids, so I've chosen jobs that have made it easier for me to take care of my kids more on a day-to-day -day basis. I sacrifice on the comp side, but I gotten trade-offs of still being able to move up because the company has been flexible enough that, yeah, they don't care if I, you know, work till midnight or whatever. I didn't do it that often, but it, it, like, I don't need to be there. Like the fact that I'm not there at dinner time doesn't matter. I just get my work done. Right. Um, and so 
that's a personal decision everybody has to make. Everybody's going to be presented with choices and they take the best that they, that they, that makes sense for them. Um, like everything, all decisions come with trade-offs. And so you can get a strict nine to five if you want, or you can, you know, sacrifice that for benefits. Uh, all right. That's it. That's my answer, Stephen. I hope this made it helpful. I know you strongly disagreed with my point of view on this, and I hope this gives you a little bit more insight. Thanks. Bye.